The Death Knights of today are a product of the Lich King, their minds corrupted and their souls bound to their master. Though some have broken free of their enslavement and now assist the Alliance and the Horde in the defense of Azeroth, most still serve as elite knights of the Scourge. But they did not start out that way. The first Death Knights, risen using the necromancy of the Shadow Council, were loyal to Gul'dan. These Death Knights retained their free will, sporting superior intellect and favoring devastating necromantic magics over the rune blades of their Scourge counterparts. And the first of these Death Knights was Terran Gorfiend. I was the first, you know. For me, the wheel of death has spun many times. <laughs> so much time has passed. I have a lot of catching up to do. Terran Gorfiend was a high-ranking member of Gul'dan's Shadow Council, a conclave of necromancers and warlocks built to rule the orc clans and convince them to serve the Burning Legion. Through the Council, Gorfiend committed a countless number of heinous acts. He murdered numerous Draenei priests outside of Hellfire Citadel when they were taken prisoner during the Orcish raid on the Temple of Karabor, now known as the Black Temple. He, along with Gul'dan and the rest of the Council, made the Black Temple their base of operations and ruled the Orcish Horde through their puppet warchief, Blackhand, leading the Orcs to corruption by the blood of Manoroth and to war with the humans of Stormwind and they used the tortured Garona half orkin to assassinate the human king, Lane Rin, to end the first war through treachery. When Gul'dan fell into a coma while probing the mind of Medivh for information on the Tome of Sargeras at the time of Medivh's death, Orgrim Doomhammer seized opportunity, killing Blackhand and taking the title of Warchief for himself. He captured and tortured Garona, learning from her of the existence of the Shadow Council. One by one he tracked down and killed most of the Council, including Terran Gorfiend. When Gul'dan awoke, Doomhammer confronted him with his treachery. Gul'dan weaseled his way out of execution, promising Doomhammer a contingent of warriors powerful enough to counter the arcane magics wielded by Azeroth's human mages. Doomhammer agreed, and left Gul'dan to his work. Using the human corpses of the defenders of Stormwind, and the necromantic powers of those few remaining members of the Council, Gul'dan attempted to re-imbue the soldiers with the spirits of the fallen council members. His attempts were met with failure until he cut out the hearts of his necrolites, transformed them into jewels radiating power, and transfixed them to truncheons. The first of these he placed into the hands of a long-dead corpse. The corpse consumed the energies of the crystallized heart, and awoke, now holding the spirit of the fallen Terran Gorfiend. Terran Gorfiend assisted Doomhammer in counteracting the mage's magics during the Second War, just as Gul'dan had promised. When Gul'dan abandoned the Horde in search of the Tome of Sargeras, Gorfiend elected to remain with Doomhammer until the eventual failure of the Horde's assault. Gorfiend led the surviving Death Knights back through the Dark Portal before its destruction. Once on Draenor, he convinced Gul'dan's old mentor, Ner'zhul, to take up the mantle of Warchief. Ner'zhul, the Elder Shaman of the Horde, and the orc who originally consigned the orcs to servitude to the Burning Legion through the manipulations of Kil'jaeden. Ner'zhul agreed to Gorfiend's nominations, and devised a plan of action knowing the Legion would come searching for him. For his plan to work, however, he would need artifacts of power, artifacts back on the world of Azeroth. Gorfiend took up Ner'zhul's mission and ventured back through a portal to Azeroth in search of the Book of Medivh, one of the spellbooks written by the Guardian Medivh, the Eye of Dalaran, a powerful artifact used in focusing mages' magics in the reconstruction of the Violet Citadel, the Jeweled Scepter of Sargeras, an artifact wielded by Sargeras with the power to open dimensional gateways, and the Skull of Gul'dan, instilled with a remnant of Gul'dan's power and will. For the book, Gorfiend traveled to Stormwind's libraries, where he found the book's keeper killed with an Alteric blade, and the book gone. Gorfiend was refused assistance by the Blackhand brothers, Rend and Mame, who had remained in Black Rock Mountain during the flight to the Dark Portal at the end of the Second War, and who refused to rejoin the Horde with Ner'zhul at the helm. Instead, Gorfiend found help in the Black Dragon aspect, Deathwing, who sought to use Draenor as refuge for his brood's eggs. Deathwing took Gorfiend to the Alteric Mountains, where he confronted the King of Alteric, Aiden Perinold. Perinold had been imprisoned during the Second War for betraying information on the Alliance to the Horde. 
he eventually agreed to give Gorfine the book in exchange for his freedom. For the Eye, Gorfine and Deathwing traveled to Dalaran, where Gorfine infiltrated the city, broke into the arcane vault of the Violet Citadel, and retrieved the Eye, escaping on the back of Deathwing. The Scepter of Sargeras was obtained from the Tome of Sargeras by two of Gorfine's companions, Tagar Spinebreaker and Fenris Wolfbrother, and the Skull of Gul'dan was taken from Hurkan Skullsplinter, chieftain of the Bone Chewer clan, by Grom Hellscream. With the artifacts in hand, Ner'zhul's soldiers returned to Draenor, where Gorfind and Ner'zhul traveled to the Black Temple to enact Ner'zhul's plan. Ner'zhul used the artifacts, save for the Skull of Gul'dan which he gave to Deathwing for its services rendered, to create a number of portals across the face of Draenor, and, drunk with the new power coursing through him, he used one to escape into the Nether with his closest followers, abandoning the Horde on Draenor. Ner'zhul was eventually captured by Kil'jaeden, turned into the original Lich King, and imprisoned at the Frozen Throne, where he created for himself his own legion of Death Knights, the first of which would be the Prince of Lordaeron, Arthas Menethil. Terran Gorfine was left on the now imploding Draenor, where he fought the invading forces of the Alliance, and was eventually slain by Turalyon. His spirit remained and was taken by the surviving Death Knights to Shadowmoon Valley. There he repaid them for their loyalty by beheading them, freeing them from their human cages and raising them once more as the Ghost Riders of Karabor. Gorfind himself became entrapped, residing in the Altar of Shadows in what remained of Shadowmoon Valley after Draenor's destruction. When adventurers from Azeroth begin arriving on what is now renamed Outland, they come across an ancient Shadowmoon spirit who claims to be an expert on Terran Gorfind. The spirit claims that with three of Gorfine's old regalia, he would be able to divine the location of the Death Knight's spirit. The adventurer retrieves the three items, Gorfine's cloak, armor, and truncheon, and brings it to the spirit. The spirit reveals himself to be Terran Gorfine, dons his old gear, and possesses the adventurer's body, trapping their spirit in the Altar of Shadows. This catches the attention of Gorfine's ethereal Draenei Jailer, Carseus the Ancient Watcher, who fights and falls to Gorfine's new host. After the battle, Gorfine releases the adventurer's body and escapes his prison, exulting in his newfound freedom. He takes up residence within his old base, the Black Temple, under the watchful eye of Illidan Stormrage, who has declared himself the ruler of the Black Temple and the Lord of Outland. Whether Gorfine had joined forces with Illidan, or had simply been tolerated by him, is unknown, but he is eventually slain once again by adventurers raiding the Black Temple in search of Illidan. Upon his death, Terran Gorfiend exclaims, The wheel spins again. Considering the number of times the old necromancer has perished and risen again, there is little question of whether he will one day rise again to command the Death Knights of the Second War. There are alternate Gorfiends on alternate Draenors, one of which is encountered when Garrosh Hellscream flees Azeroth with the help of a member of the Bronze Dragonflight. When the Dark Portal is opened, connecting Azeroth to this alternate Draenor, adventurers, led by Thrall, Khadgar, and a handful of other heroes, storm the portal and find it powered on the other side by the entrapped warlock Skuldan, Cho'Gal, and a third warlock known as Terengor. To close the portal, the adventurer frees the warlocks, and after they make their escape, the warlocks convened, enacting plans to regain power. Terengor is sent to Akendun to assault the Akanai. The adventurer chases down Terengor, through Talador and even to the remote ruins of the planet Xandros, and eventually confronts him within Akendun, where he plummets into the heart of the mausoleum. There, he gorges on the souls of the Draenei, transforming into a hideous creature and taking for himself the new name of Gorfiend. He is transported to the Legion-commanded Hellfire Citadel, where he consumes the spirits of orcs too weak to become fell orcs until he is eventually slain by adventurers, infiltrating the citadel in search of Gul'dan. Whether or not the original Death Knight will rise again to become a threat is yet to be seen, but it is likely his spirit lingers on, waiting for an opportunity to once again escape the prison of death. With the Legion invading Azeroth, and both the alternate Gul'dan and Illidan Stormrage becoming active once more, it makes one wonder if the powerful magics of Gorfiend will be employed once more.